According to large swathes of the media and semi-concerned members of our extended families, spending several hours a day playing video games is rotting our brains and turning us all into violent psychopaths. In an attempt to appease said worried individuals, we gamers may look to diversify our interests, and what better way to get away from our screens for a few hours while also getting to hang out with our best buddies than over a tabletop game or two. Long gone are the days when the words board game meant a humiliating two hours of handing over Monopoly money to your smug brother who's got hotels on Mayfair and Park Lane. Instead, you can now play tabletop versions of everything from Golden Balls to Game of Thrones, not to mention the only one you're all here for, video games. Let's take a look at some, shall we? I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 board games based on video games. Number 10. Lara Croft Tomb Raider – The Angel of Darkness by all accounts, Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness isn't a good video game, sitting at a pretty dismal average of 49% on Metacritic. According to reviewers, the things that let it down were poor controls, clunky combat, and an unacceptable number of bugs. Its story, on the other hand, was widely praised by critics, and sees Lara attempting to clear her name when she's accused of murder. Since the board game follows the same narrative as the video game, only without everything that made the latter so awful, the tabletop experience is actually very enjoyable. Either individual Individually or in teams of up to two people, players can choose to become either Lara Croft, obtaining evidence to clear her name of a homicide charge, or Pieter van Eckhart, whose name I've ruined, a criminal trying to nick paintings from the museum. Not only is it up to you to complete your assigned goal, but you must also prevent your opponent from achieving their objective as well. It's an utterly frustrating experience that will have you coming back time and time again, unlike the video game, which just had us launching our consoles through the nearest window. Number 9. Doom the Board Game game. You may think a game as action-heavy as Doom wouldn't translate into a tabletop format, but it turns out you'd be wrong. Although there is far less shooting involved than in its digital counterpart, Doom the board game still manages to capture the essence of its source material by transforming it into a strategic battle between elite marines and the forces of hell. Requiring a minimum of two people and up to a maximum of five, one player takes control of the invading legions of demons, while the others are charged with working together as marines to undertake various missions. These include escort tasks, hostile eliminations, and sample collections amongst many, many more. Each mission has its own individual board setup, so there's a huge amount of scope for replayability. The aim of the game is fairly simple. Players will undertake six missions, with each side having different win conditions. The first side to complete four missions wins the game. That said, we're not going to pretend the game itself is straightforward, as there's a lot going on, but once you do get your head around it, we guarantee that it's incredibly rewarding, regardless of whether you're a Doom fan or not. Number 8. Portal the Uncooperative Cake Acquisition Game Great news, everyone! We're pleased to announce that although the cake in Valve's 2007 puzzle platformer Portal did turn out to be fictional, the cake featured in Portal the Uncooperative Cake Acquisition Game is 100% real. Well, it's plastic, but it does exist. It's just inedible. Despite there being very few similarities in terms of gameplay between the Portal video games and the tabletop version, the Uncooperative Cake Acquisition Game does carry over the spirit of its digital predecessor incredibly well, managing to keep a firm grasp on the humour that was part of the reason we all fell in love with Portal in the first place. The game itself isn't too complex. During each turn, players can deploy an aperture card, move their test subjects, and activate and recycle one of the board's many test chambers. The objective, as signposted by the title of the game, is to hoard as many tin cake slices as you can, while simultaneously trying to destroy everyone else's. The game ends as soon as one player no longer has any test subjects left on the board, or all their cake is incinerated, and whoever has the most cake in play when this happens is the winner. Delicious! Number 7. Batman Arkham City Escape it's difficult to deny that playing any game as the caped crusader himself is an awful lot of fun, especially when you take into account all of Batman's high-tech equipment, his martial arts mastery, and the smorgasbord of squishy villains you get to put out of commission and into the hospital. I hope they have insurance. It is indeed good to be good, but every so often it is also very good to be bad. So for those who feel that Brucey Dubs wins far too often, there's Batman Arkham City Escape. A reasonably simple game meant for just two players, each takes the role of either Batman or his many adversaries, with the goal of the latter being to get as many of them out of the city as possible before the former can intervene. 
You gain points for succeeding at your appointed task, and whichever side is the first to ten wins the game. As you can probably imagine, scoring a victory for Bat-Lad is not an easy feat, but players are backed up by his iconic utility belt and various combat manoeuvres which help to make things a little easier. Besides, it does feel like Gotham has got more than its fair share of nutcases, so if one or two get out then it's probably not the end of the world. Number 6. The Witcher Adventure Game at this point we're starting to wonder if the Witcher creator, Andrzej Sapkowski, has done some sort of deal with the devil on account of the fact that everything Geralt of Rivia touches seemingly turns to gold. As if several best-selling books, three outstanding video games and a hugely successful Netflix series isn't enough blonde hunky boy for you, there's also a massively enjoyable board game as well. The Witcher Adventure Game is a competitive tabletop escapade for between two and four players, with each getting to choose who they play as, though this is very dependent on how how you wish to play. Whether you prefer to do business with a sword, diplomacy, a little help from your friends, or a touch of magic, there's a character in there to suit you. As in the video games, players must complete quests in order to advance, and whoever's managed to gain the most points by the end wins. Although the physical edition of the game is now harder to come by than a civilian that's willing to toss you a coin, Witcher fans interested in playing the adventure game can do so digitally, and while it doesn't have quite the same atmosphere, it's pretty darn close. Number 5. This War of Mine, The Board Game Video games about warfare have been commonplace for decades, with franchises like Call of Duty dropping titles on the regular. What's uncommon, however, is for such games to focus on the civilian impact of combat, which is arguably why 2014's This War of Mine proved so popular amongst fans of survival gaming. Similar to its digital counterpart, the aim of This War of Mine, the board game, is to keep your group alive until such a time that a ceasefire is declared. Anywhere between one and six players will need to work together to ensure that they have enough food and clean water, shelter, and come the winter, warmth. When the night falls, there are also thieves and bandits that will try to steal what few possessions you have. Sadly, surviving isn't as straightforward as just punching a few trees or luring a cow to your base with some hay, and players will be forced to make difficult decisions that may have unforeseen, devastating consequences. The fact that the aim is not just to survive, but to do so in a way that your characters can live with themselves after the fact makes this war of mine a somewhat uncomfortable experience, but a fulfilling one nonetheless. Number 4. Sid Meier's Civilization – A New Dawn if you're a fan of Sid Meier's Civilization series of video games, but long for a version that allows you to physically assault your opponents when they sack the cities you've spent ages building, then why not pick up a copy of Sid Meier's Civilization A New Dawn? This tabletop delight gives players the opportunity to conquer a brand new country, one that they can populate with cities, world wonders, and barbarians on their path to victory. As in the video games, triumph can be achieved in a multitude of ways, and players will need to strategize and potentially even form alliances if they want want any chance of securing the win. We won't lie, it's not the most straightforward of games, and those unfamiliar with the franchise may struggle to get their heads around everything that's going on. Fans of the video games, however, should have no trouble in getting to grips with the mechanics of A New Dawn, and with a full campaign taking less than two hours, it's a far better option for those who just don't have time to commit to the likes of Civ 6. The only downside is that it lacks Sean Bean's dulcet narration, but hey, you can't have everything, can you? Number 3. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate Right, bear with me for a moment here. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate is a smashing little tabletop experience based on the Baldur's Gate franchise. This is, in turn, based on the role-playing phenomenon Dungeons & Dragons, though Betrayal at Baldur's Gate is also based on another massively popular tabletop game, Betrayal at House on the Hill. Have I got all that right? Excellent. Though the origins of the game are more convoluted than your average D&D campaign, the actual gameplay of Betrayal at Baldur's Gate is quite straightforward. The shadow of that pesky git Baal has been cast over Baldur's Gate, and it's up to players to work together and survive the malevolence that lies ahead. But plot twist, one or more players will turn traitor partway through the game, so you'll need all your wits about you if you're going to make it out alive. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate includes 50 diverse scenarios, each playing out differently every time, so no matter how many times you go back to it, you're never going to experience the same game twice. You may never trust your friends again either, but I'm afraid we can't do anything about that. Number 2. Resident Evil 2 – The Board Game 
If competitive play isn't really your thing, then perhaps a trip to Raccoon City is just what you need to brighten your day. Brought to life thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign and released in tandem with the Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 2 The Board Game sees up to four players working together to try to escape the escalating zombie threat. Each player, having chosen to play as Leon S. Kennedy, Claire Redfield, Ada Wong or Robert Kendo, starts in a different position on the board, and the aim of the game is to explore the map, uncover clues, equipment and weapons, and ultimately get out of alive. On each turn, there's an action, a reaction, and a tension phase, with the latter adding a surprise element to an otherwise strategic experience. Furthermore, the game is completely cooperative, so if one player dies, it's game over for the whole group. If the thought of relying on other people for your salvation makes you feel a bit upset, however, then fret not because you don't even need pals in order to enjoy Resident Evil 2 the board game as it can be played by just one person. After all, there's no we in Zombie Apocalypse. Number 1. Dark Souls The Board Game Many gamers have been put off the Soulsborne series over the years thanks in large part to its devilishly steep difficulty curve. We get it, although some people love nothing more than overcoming a challenge that's bested them for hours just as many turn to video games for a more relaxing experience. And that's okay! We're sorry to say, however, that for those interested in the Dark Souls franchise who just don't have the patience for the video games, the tabletop version is no more forgiving. We wish we were joking, but the description from the publisher literally leads with the words, prepare to die. If you and up to three friends are feeling up to the task, however, you must work together to defeat enemies in a similar way as you would the video game, i.e. by dying repeatedly and learning from your mistakes. Oh, and did we mention that if one of you expires, everyone has to respawn back at the nearest bonfire? Sorry about that. While we can't say that Dark Souls the board game is going to be fun for all the family, it does perfectly capture the spirit of its digital predecessors, so if that's what you're into, you're in for an absolute treat.